Hello, hello again, everybody. Zach Attack is here by Tech Sports for this Monday, January, uh, February. Yeah, it's February now. February 1st, 2016. Hope everyone had a good weekend. I didn't, because, of course, for my wrestling fans out there, saw NXT in the day at Royal Music Theater on Saturday. Uh, my review of the show is on this channel. It was an excellent show as it was when I went to see him in Cleveland. Glad I get to see him in Detroit this time, and with Sami Zayn. So, check out my review of that show. Uh, for my football fans, no, I did not watch the Pro Bowl either. Yes. All I care about is the Super Bowl in six days, so I didn't watch the Pro Bowl. Who cares about Pro Bowl? It's like any other All-Star games. Like, no interest at all. So, but we're all interested in combat sports. Now, do I have some wrestling stuff? A lot of MMA stuff happened over the weekend. Two cards happened. UFC and Bellator had back-to-back -back cards Friday and Saturday. And Bellator got its biggest signing yet since they got Josh Koscheck. And some more UFC news on the way. And Bellator too. So let's kick off with some Bellator action. Bellator had, of course, the first event of 2016. Bellator 148, which was supposed to be headlined by the debut of Josh Koscheck. Cost check, but he got injured. So Temtex Paul Daly took the main event against Andy Yoke in a decent card. Um, the heavyweight division fight between Tony Johnson and Rafael Butler was yeah, more like a beatdown match. Tony Johnson's wrestling at the best. He went for the takedown because Rafael's more of a striker. He's a boxer guy. I think that's what he said. But uh, Tony's like more the aggressive guy, the takedown guy. You know, the wrestler took him down. Got a TKO by grounding and pounding him in the third. It was his okay first fight. Then the last three fights ended in the first with terrific knockouts. First things first, we have a big candidate for knockout of the year, Patricky Pimple. It's been inconsistent, but when he does get going, he gets some hard. And man, he knocked Ryan Couture on his ass with a nasty knockout. Why right did it chin? Oh my god, that was like a sick ass knockout when he knocked him out. In the very first round, about three minutes in. So, great knockout from Patricky. Damian Paul Bailey and Chris Honeycutt. By the way, the Patricky fight was in the lightweight. This is a welterweight fight now. Paul Bailey and Chris Honeycutt. I've never seen the first fight. And having a uh, cut on his eye to cut, make the fight no contest. So, really looking forward to the rematch. Sad it ended in a minute or two. In the very first one, with Paul Bailey coming in aggressively, got him down on the ground, took him down, grounded him on his ass. Flatter him out, bang, there you go. Big victory for Paul Daly in a rematch that could have been a lot longer. Then we have Paul Daly, who wants another shot at Koscheck, because I remember that fight in 2010 when Paul Daly fought Kosh Josh, Josh Koscheck, which would end up being Paul Daly's last fight in UFC, because I was at a sports bar watching that card when he sucker punched Koscheck after the, after the bell. I was like, wow, you think I fired after that? So, Daly talking trash on the screen. He wanted cost check. He was in the crowd. So, the rematch may still happen between these two. Especially after Paul Daly's decisive victory over Andy Uick in the very first round. Knockout. Big punch. To the chin of Uick. Took him down. Boom. So, very short fights in the last three fights of the Bell Tour. Decent card. Great knockouts. Even though they were short fights, great finishes. UFC's card on Saturday night, though. Up and down. Uh, the first fight, we have Ryan Barbarina taking on Sage Northcott in the route three. Sage Northcott's got a little hype on him. I didn't know he had a little hype on him. Um, But he had a great show in the first fight. He almost got Brian down. He almost knocked him down. But then Brian came back in the second round with a great comeback, including a submission hole. A lot of people making fun of Sage because he had a little hype on him. And the choke maybe wasn't that tight as we all intended. Thought, well, as we all thought it was tight. Um, as a lot of people were making fun of Bob Marina after the fight. Uh, not making fun of Bob Marina, but making fun of, uh, of uh, North Carolina was his first loss. So hopefully he comes back stronger. And he's getting more experience. Then a better fight. Jimmy Rivera and Yuri Alicantra. This was a good fight. Uh, it was very back and forth, great, kind of evenly matched here between both guys. Great, great, great takedowns, great striking in this fight. 
with Rivera looking good. Like, both guys look good. With Rivera winning by unanimous decision. So, it was a very decent fight coming off that Oka first fight. Definition of fight not to lose. Uh, ben Rothwell and Josh Bonet, who I know as the commentator of New Japan Pro Wrestling on Access TV. I like him on that show. I didn't like him on Saturday, though. This fight was definitely a fight not to lose. Like, boring ass fight. These guys didn't even touch each other. And they deserve booze. They were ranked in the top 10. Should be demoted. They don't deserve a shot against uh, the champ right now, who is, of course, currently injured. Of course, referring to. Will do. Fabricio will do. We all know the story that next that this Saturday's pay per view, not a pay per view. It's a fight night on Fox. Sports one, which I will be recording. What well, won by a submission in the second round with a chokehold in the second round? So it was an okay, Coleman. Then the main event, Anthony Rumble Johnson took on Darth Bader, Ryan Bader. And Johnson, I think, is one of the very first fights in a while. Uh, he won a UFC 191. He wants to get back in the title hunt for the heavyweight championship. May have to a little bit because of an impending return. Which I'll get to news on that in just a second. So Anthony came in with a hot spot. He went at Bader right off the bat. Just punching at him. Took his ass down. And knocked his ass out in the very first round in less than a minute. He was just really aggressive. Came out aggressive. And it showed as he got Brian Bader down. Knocked his ass out in the very first round of the, of the main event. He won before the night bonus, along with Ben Rothwell for his chokehold. They got the fight in the right fight tonight, which went to Jimmy Rivera and Louis Alicantra. I agree to that, being the fight of the night. Now, uh, Eddie Rumble Johnson wants a title shot, but may have to wait. Because we're impending an announcement about the rematch between Daniel Cormier and, yes, John Bones Jones gets an automatic rematch. For the UFC light heavyweight championship that he never lost. And he's aiming for a lot of fights. And by the way, um, I don't think Bonesy should get an automatic rematch. Um, I think he should get one match in before getting a shot against Cormier. He wants to face Wumble, the match we were supposed to get last May on Terry got his infamous hit and run of us. And also Gustafson again. So they're all working out a rematch right now between Jones and Cormier. Hopefully in the next couple days we'll find out the date and venue. But that's what they're working on right now. Bones are getting his automatic rematch. They were maybe hoping to make it in New York City. For a possible call to MSG in April. But that got slashed because of the still impending ban on MMA in New York State. Which UFC still trying to lift that ban. So there you go. Jones, Cormier too. Maybe is in the works. And I think Johnson should get the winner. And if Bones does get an automatic rematch, which I think he should get one more fight before Kobe, but if he does get the automatic rematch and wins, he gets Johnson the fight we were supposed to get. And if he ends up and if it ends up being booked that way, if Johnson does get the Bonesy, Bonesy, don't get arrested, don't get injured. We want this fight to happen this time. Between you and Rumble. And let Rumble kick your ass. Like it was going to last man. Until you get arrested. Uh, anyway, uh, Bellator news. Big news coming out of Bellator today. As I mentioned, they got the biggest signing since Josh Koscheck. Benson Henderson is signing with Bellator. Wow. The former UFC and WEC lightweight, former champion of UFC, has revealed that he has signed on to Bellator, saying, I'd like to announce... My move over to Bellator MMA. His, his contract was up at UFC and he was going to negotiate for nice with Bellator. So I'm beyond excited for this next phase of my career. It's a big move, like any move, when switching employers or jobs after working somewhere for a long time. Although he's leaving under good terms, apparently. He is thanking Dana, Dana White and Lorenzo Fatilla. Of course, he was. They they waved his contract off to negotiate with him and other companies. And now, boom, Benson's in you, uh, Bellator. I, I think it's interesting for Bellator. You know, they've got like Bellator is like the the WCW slash TNA of MMA, getting all these old UFC guys. 
going in, you know, Bellator has, you know, Ortiz, Devin Bonner, Ken Shamrock, and now, and I mentioned ja, uh, Koscheck, and now, Benson Henderson. Ja, uh, a lot of people responding on Twitter. Scott Coker, the uh, president of Bellator, just basically said, Welcome to the family. And it's going to be interesting. A lot of the UFC guys said, Congrats, Benson, your new contract. That was boy Nelson. So, I think it'll be interesting to see Ben. I think he'll do well in uh, Bellator. And uh, he's lightweight, so look out. Michael Chandler. Oh, God. That, that would be an awesome fight to see. Michael Chandler and Benson. And also, um, the current lightweight champion, Ill Will Brooks. So, it's going to be very interesting to see how he's going to do. So, there you go. Benson Anderson on his way to Bellator. Now, before we get to my wall preview, I just send my best wishes and everything and all my prayers and all my everything. And I bet you all as a fans feel this. Sending out the best wishes to the hitman, Bret Hart, who just announced he is battling prostate cancer. Um, he's battled some stuff before with uh, he had a stroke a couple years ago. Of course, nasty concussion that ended his career and had several surgeries. But he just revealed he has prostate. Say that I've had a lifelong dance and I've survived many hard battles, like I mentioned. That's, I mentioned some of his battles. I now fight my toughest battle with hesitation and fear. I openly declare myself in my fight against prostate cancer. I make a solemn vow to all of those that once believed in me, the dead and the living, that I will wage my fearsome fight against cancer with one shield and one sword, carry my de determination and my fury for life, emboldened by all the love that's kept me going this long. Um. I hope he gets non-toxic treatment when it comes to like no radiation and stuff, no chemotherapy, like you know, what I mean? no chemo. But if he does it, he does it. I just hope he doesn't have any damage because I've done a lot of research about what the chemotherapy and all this toxic stuff does. See, when you get toxic treatments from the doctors, and that's another topic for another day because I'm not not knowledgeable on that stuff. My dad is. My dad's getting into that stuff, but the truth stuff. So, um, with all the, uh, all the wishes in the world, a lot of fellow wrestlers have been setting up the best wishes to Brett, including Jericho, among other, especially Canadian wrestlers, like Jericho, NKO, Kevin Owens, other people, so, good luck to you, Brett, man, keep up the fight, man, you always fought well in the ring, you're gonna fight well against cancer, man, because you are the best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever freaking will be. Get him, hit man. Go get him, man. Best wishes. Now, let's get on down to my wall preview. For tonight should be an interesting wall. Heading towards fast lane in about three weeks. Top four. We can only think of four questions today. Top four questions that must be answered tonight. Question number four. Will Golden Truth finally team up? Now, we've seen these little vignettes on Wall and SmackDown last week that All Truth's trying to start a. Uh, Gold Dust actually is trying to start a tag team with All Truth. Now, New Day needs some new teams, a few of, not the Usos, I'm sorry, I'm sick. I love the Usos, but come on, we need some new tag team blood in there. Push the Ascension, damn it! And Luther Dragons are gone, get some calls out. Then, of course, we know Kalisto's the U.S. champion. These events against Neville on those, they should have more time, but still. Um, but Golden Truth could be like a comic team. The building of them is a comic team, because all two guys, my bad thing. So we'll see if Golden Truth comes to tuition tonight after a little bit of stuff on the thing. After this question number five, I am doing top five. Top five questions. That's five, question number five. Question number four. Who will AJ wrestle tonight? AJ Styles wrestled against Jericho this past Monday. And also fought against Curtis Axel. Now, we were hoping to see an Owens feud against AJ, I'm still hoping that it still happens, but they may be heading towards the Jericho AJ feud, especially after the Jericho handshake and pulling him back in after the loss on Monday. And Jericho may be turning heels, so we shall see 
what direction WWE takes when it comes to AJ's first major feud in the WWE. Question number three. Yeah. Will Sasha finally turn on Team Bad? Now, Sasha's technically still on Team Bad, but we haven't seen them in a while. No, you know what I mean? Or to me, I heard they taped a backstage segment on SmackDown, but they never aired. So maybe they'll do something like that on Water and on Water Night. Because Sasha, of course, as we all know now, is gunning for Charlotte and the women's title, but so is Becky. But we get stuff like that and stupid shit like what they'll do it in Natalia and Paige. And this pointless matches with the Bellas. The ones that are still standing. Brie Bella and of course Alicia Fox with Nikki recently got done with neck surgery. No matter how you how much you love or dislike Nikki Bella's character, you cannot help but to send your best wishes to her as well in recovery to her neck injury and surgery. Hopefully it doesn't if it ends her career, it's sad. Cause you don't wish for that if you hate someone that bad like Nikki Bella. You don't wish. But so there you go. See what happens with Sasha tonight and Team Bad. Team uh, question number two. Will we get any new matches made for Fastlane? We know the main event. Which I will get to in our number one question. Um we don't know any other matches yet. For the, uh, then we won't get an IC title match because of the main event now. We may get a US title match, obviously a tag match, and other matches. So hopefully we get a lot more seeds planted for fast lane matches and make it a better pay per view than it was last year. It's the second annual fast lane, so called a four way pay per view. They're trying to make it a bigger pay per view than it is. And they're trying, especially with Lesnar going to be there. And that leads to question number one. Well, good time for Brock Lesnar tonight. We focus on the Wyatts or focus on his two fast lane opponents, Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns. Now, we thought we would have a Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns. Uh, no. Anyway. A Bray Wyatt Brock Lesnar match at fast lane after Bray Wyatt and the Wyatt family took Lesnar out of the Wumble. We didn't see Bray, uh, Brock on Wall last week. But in the end of Wall, Directions for Brock turned upside down, and he was added to a match between Ambrose and Reigns with the winner to take on Triple H at WrestleMania 32. So I'm surprised to do that direction with Brock being in the match with the winner. I mean, Roman Reigns. I'm sorry. I think they're trying to match with Roman, but we do not want him as champion. We want Ambrose, man. Ambrose was so close last year. Yeah, he almost won the title against Sam Rollins in the Elimination Chamber. And that's then that stupid DQ came. Like he won the match, but then referee disqualified for another incident because referee got knocked out. Because another referee came out. So they're trying to best of range, but people see through it. He got booed out of the Wumble again. So they need to stop pushing Reigns. Because the fans. No matter what you do, WWE, sincere or forced, we don't want Reigns. So we shall see what Brock does. If he focuses on the Wyatt, or is this focuses on his two fast lane opponents. See who he targets tonight. As the Beast conquers all tonight on Y87 Central on USA Network. And that is it. For my attack sports for today, stay tuned tonight for my wall review. That mind you've been attacked by the sports news from Zach. See you later. Yeah.